Hey, Kitty Girls, welcome back. It's Cubs Out Loud Drag Race Tea Time, episode number two. And it just so happens to be Sunday, January 21st of 2024. And we're going to be covering episodes two and three of season 16, which were Queen Choice Awards, or Queen's Choice Awards, and the Mother of All Balls. For those of you that haven't seen us or heard us before, my name's Gary. With me is my ever-fabulous co-host. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Welcome to the show. And uh, this is a little kind of a uh, review type show that we do where we discuss what we think about the particular episodes, because Lord knows there's plenty of those damn shows and podcasts out there that break <laughs> down every single fucking moment. And we used to do that, uh, but we old and we tired. So... <laughs> Wait, I don't. Ha oh, wait, there it is. <laughs> you got the, you got, yep, she got the fact fan. <laughs> <They're ready>. Yeah. <laughs> so facts there's are that. facts. Facts are facts. Yeah. And due to our schedules, uh, we're probably going to be doing the every other week kind of thing. So we did cover episode number one, and it was a split premiere. We honestly had thought it was going to be like back to back episodes, mm -hmm. like episode yeah. one, and then immediately into episode two. And, and uh, World of Wonder and MTV were like, no, no, no. You shall wait. We want that coin, so we're just gonna we're right. just gonna keep right, we're gonna right. drag this out. And to be fair, a lot of like um, hosts and different things have talked about the fact that they appreciate getting to know half the cast, like in, yeah. in a capsulated bubble, and then the second half of the cast in another bubble. And then we're also going to get into that in this episode. Everybody's back or everybody's yeah. together. And I know I used to have an issue with the split premiere, and I think I would have. I have an issue with the script premiere when if it's like like what happened today, which is where we had one episode one day and then the episode we had to wait until next week. I think I would have liked maybe them together in like a, while it, a split premiere. We got to see both on the same day. It would have been for a longer right. It show. Right. It would have made for like three hours of television probably yeah, or something. But, but. but yeah, but that's sort of the, eh, I'm fine. It, it, this, I think, I agree with the, I think I was one of those ones that wasn't the biggest fan of Split, only because um, I want to kind of get it going. Let's get going. Let's get moving. So we don't have to spend right. weeks and weeks not getting eliminating a girl. But I do appreciate this because it does give each queen, when they split them up, you get seven at a time in this episode, in this instance, seven and seven. Right. You get a dash, you get a good taste of them as opposed to when they're all together and mm -hmm. um, they're going to just highlight, you know, certain ones here and there. Well, and, and I think a big thing was to be said about how, you know, they, they quickly create this like a group B group dynamic mm -hmm. and production, I think tries really like hard to have this antagonistic, like who was first, who was second and they're like little pot or whatever. And mm -hmm. I don't know how much that's going to carry through the rest of the season. We've now seen episode three. There's a little bit of that. Um, and I think it's natural. Like the Queens that, the, that you come in with are kind mm -hmm. of your immediate, like chosen family because you've been thrown together. So you've had the same experience and they didn't rinse and repeat the formula of what they did in episode two that they did in episode one and by that i mean like the um mini challenge was altered um and mm -hmm. the talent show was thematically this or thematically different but basically the same uh right so i mean there was some there were some parallels to that but notably uh your guest star star in uh quotes what girl i'm just gonna say it i'm gonna call it out now I'm gonna. I'm, we haven't even gotten into the episode. Charisse Theron is the is the Charlize Theron. Yeah, is the star, the fucking celebrity that is in episode one, and then episode two group gets Becky. Who? Uh, I didn't know who this bitch I, was. I I know I know who she is. Well, good in for a you. Sense. Uh, <laughs> no, because I was like so irritated. I was like, who's this little pipsqueak of a bitch with their little air horns walking into the room? And like, and I think Willem or somebody else on another show was like, you could tell even then that they were like, who is this? Like only one person in the group of seven really seemed to know who that was. Although there was debate to be made in the first episode because there's a there's a horrible audio clip in one of the shows I listened to where <laughs> Charlize Theron had to introduce herself. Like when she came into the room, she said, 
it's me, Charlize Theron. Like, like just in case any of the queens didn't know who she was, which I was like, <laughs> well, that says something. Anyways, uh, so yeah, I just wasn't impressed with the guest on on the second show, and I'll I'll come back to that later. Uh, but that was that was an issue for me. That being said. Um, they are, you know, kind of split into two different groups and you have two different things. I'm just also going to say this. I would like someone to explain to me at production why group B is the big girl group. I I alluded to it. At, at, I think, I don't know if it was in the post show of the, our previous episode. I think it may be in the post show. Because it was the first thing I picked up on is like they they kind of showed like the, the group of queens. And I was like, the fuck? Like, oh, all the big girls are in group B? What's that about? What the fuck is going on here? Right. Oh, yeah, that thing. Uh... <laughs> what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> right. I was like, uh, I, don't, I don't understand what's happening. But I'm just going to call it out right now before we even get into uh, reviewing things. I think group B has better personalities in terms of dynamic. Like, they are boisterous. They are, like really uh i think bringing some stuff forward that mm. um wanted to like that make for better television than group a that's a that's an assessment because um... <laughs> here's the thing amanda dawn geneva uh geneva no, sorry group two. amanda dawn i rearranged the order on our list sorry i'm reading an, an alpha now so amanda dawn Mirage, Morphine, Snooze, Q, Zephira, Tsunami, Snooze. So, <laughs> sorry. Wow. I'm just calling it out. I just, and, you guys, I'm going to get whiplash hitting all these <laughs> fucking fans. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the second group, we've got Geneva, Megami, Maya Iman, Snooze, um, <laughs> Nymphia Wynn, Plain Jane, a.k.a. the villain, Plasma, Hershey liqueur. Um, I'm you know I'm just gonna call it as it is. Plain Jane's uh, playing the villain thing. There's there's a rumor going online that she's a plant that she's like a production plant, mm. um, and she's not actually that like well known. Um, mm. Anyways, that she's like she's totally instigating and and she was strategically placed for many reasons. Uh, well, especially with all of her callbacks and things that are we like, can we it. can. I, I, I want to talk about her later. Okay. I genuinely do. So I have, some, um, I have some words. No, no, no. That's fine. So Plasma, she's obviously the New York like musical like you know theater gal who is going to get that edit. Um, and you know, so she's really kind of pull, wants to pull attention. Um, Megami, we'll get to her. Uh, and Geneva's no shrinking, you know, Violet. Like I mean, so I really feel like most of Group B. They are very kind of like I don't know if I want to say vocal. I just feel like they're 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 ma the... they're matured in their sort of presentation and their mouths as far as like they want to be heard. I would call Group B the personality group. Yeah, like they're gonna have a lot of the personality. Not saying that Group A didn't have personality. I'm just saying when you compare apples to oranges in this situation. There was a lot more personality, a lot more going on in Group B than there was in Group A. I think Group A is very quiet in comparison. A little bit, yeah. I mean, I look at it this way. Safira, mother, she mm -hmm. just observes and she lets them be fools. Um, Fair. <laughs> Q, highly talented, also very observational. Mm -hmm. um, also probably gets inside her head. Morphine, she just wants to be like in front of a mirror, in front of a camera. Um, Mirage... A little bit more outspoken. Mm -hmm. But also a little quiet. Right. I'm noticing. I think she's one, another one that's going to probably do. I know we're doing this now. <laughs> but like, she's the one I feel like is going to have a lot of like getting in her own head a bit. That's fair. Um, Dawn, but, I think she's I think she's highly skilled. I think she's also been around a lot of veteran queens and has mm -hmm. learned a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and knows how to like make good camera and also mind her mouth mm -hmm. a little bit. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, not that not that she will get her let her mouth get herself into trouble because apparently that's going to come later in this season. I have a feeling, mm -hmm. but 
I feel like she knows, like, I think she knows the game. And then Amanda, God bless Amanda. She's just, anyways. <laughs> she's trying. She's trying. She is trying. She's definitely trying. Trying our nerves. Anyway, anyway. That being I, I, said, I, I, do you want to jump yeah. into our first segment? Let's do this. Let's do this because <laughs> I've, already, I've already got some some thoughts and feelings and opinions on this shit. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> Racers, start your engines and may the best drag queen win. All right, so uh, put the pedal to the metal. These are our overall thoughts from both episodes combined together. We have three categories, for those that don't know. Uh, here you go. And for those that have heard it before, just hang in. So we've got serves. Serves are our positives. These are things that we appreciated uh, that came out of that particular episode. Swerves uh, in this drag race. Maybe it's a road hazard. You should have gone around. I don't know what you were thinking. So that's the negatives. And then nerve could be one or the other. Nerve could be like... Yes, mama, house down boots, all of that, tongue pop, you know, and a, and a, mm-hmm. and a sleigh. Or it could be pack your bags, go home. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you were thinking, but that was that was a disaster. So that being said, uh, we're going to start it with serves. Damon, who you give and serve to? Um, Nymphia wins slaves. I'm just going to say it right now. Um, I've enjoyed her. She is great TV. Um, she has a wonderful concept and, and, and direction going for her. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, she's got the weird, she's got the weird, but she also has the talent, um, and the creativity part. Mm -hmm. It's just very interesting. So, um, her, um, talent show number was beautiful. It's something that we I don't think we really get to see. We don't see a lot of on Drag Race. Um, I, I loved her makeup. I loved like the tiger or lion like like mouth that was going on with her uh, makeup. Um, she, I think, also is very um, very intelligent, very much in that head, and I think she knows what's going on, um, and she's having fun. I hope that lasts. Um, she's going to be a tough one to beat, I think. Um, just in my personal opinion, I feel very strong that she's going to be a top contender. Um, because these, the two episodes, her introduction, her introduction was the cookiest fucking thing with this banana thing. But it's something I feel like I will remember. Like, I remember all the glasses. I remember the big beehive. I remember the big ass banana under this coat, like, and just all of this all together just made for a very fun and kooky thing. And, um, and she's also going on the, um, I have a palette, which is I'm yellow, like the, the yellow palette, which I think is kind of fun, but also kind of tongue in cheek and also, you know, could also go in a very different ways And the banana girl. Like that's, that's, that's fun. Yeah. So, Go Nymphia, I'm I'm a fan. I'm a big big fan. Yeah, I I would agree that um, she's something else. Mm-hmm. She, as far as I'm concerned, out of these three episodes, she's a front runner. Like so much so, I think several members of the cast are in trouble. I mean, yes. I mean, there were there were several queens in her, you know, the, her seven that should have been like, I'm good. I'm just going to pack my bags and just go the fuck home. Like, well, the 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 social media threads that I have seen since Friday's episode, episode three, the master class lesson she gave us as viewers that we didn't quite catch. I'm just going to call it out right now. She is walking around the room, observing everybody else's work, being annoying, being like in other people's business, starting shit with plain Jane, which Mm -hmm. there's some high speculation that production had told her what plain Jane did in her voting. Mm -hmm. That being said, if you were paying close enough attention, she was actually working on her outfit as she was walking around the room. You just didn't know what she was doing. Right. 
And then when she turned that corner, girl. I'm going to get to that later. Girl. I'm going to get to that later. <laughs> I'm going to get to that later. Anyway, moving, moving right along. So, Gary, what about yep. you? Um, <laughs> so, um, I wrote The Spice is Reality. And I feel like these 14 really are an interesting, like, chai like latte mix <laughs> it's flavorful and it is a lot of things mm -hmm. we have latinas we have like um big attitude like big city girls mm -hmm. we have like kind of more rural um look at me kind of personality stuff mm -hmm. we have um baby drag we have like Instagram, social media famous, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. drag. Like we've really got a lot of stuff going on here. And we've got the the potster. Mm -hmm. So like to me, this is like um, a fresh made from the Abuela's Kitchen Mexican hot chocolate that is like layers Mm. I am really appreciating this particular blend. Like it yeah. is, it is, it like, it is just such a, a taste of something. Mm -hmm. And quickly, I think the lesser pronounced things will fall away. And those will be the first queens to go. Right. Um, because productions challenges, the ones that really bring something to the camera, we know they're probably going to want to keep them around. And right. I think that will prove a little bit of a challenge because if they're not that skilled, it's like, well, what do you do with that? Maybe, uh, you know, they're going to pull more stunts like they did at the end of episode three and put somebody in the bottom who shouldn't have been in the bottom. So I'm just saying because, you know, social media is having a field day with that, too. <laughs> you know. Well, you know, they didn't put themselves in the bottom. They did the Raider Queen thing, and that's why she fell into the bottom. I know. I know. I know. But you know when everybody's like, including the queen, is like, say what? <laughs> I'm in the bottom three. And this bitch over here? She's not in the bottom two? How does that happen? Right. Right, 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 right. So yeah, there's that. So, anyways, I just think the spice is reality. Like we, we, we. It's been a long time since I feel, what, since like six. It's been mm. a long time since I really feel like we've got a whole lot of things going on to pay attention to. Yeah. In terms of the the queens in that case, so I I, I serve it up that uh, production, maybe, for once in a long time, has a very interesting mix, a very interesting blend. I will agree. I think this is the, like, I, okay. All tea, all tea in this moment. Um, hey, y'all, here's some tea. Um, I saw the pre, you know, the previews of these, of these queens that they came in. You know, I did, I didn't watch the, like, Meet the Queens. I didn't, as I mentioned in the last episode, I didn't watch all the Meet the Queens and get to all the interviews and stuff. But I did see, like, the, their, like, entrance looks and kind of thing. And I felt very meh about this group of girls. Right. I was not feeling them. Jim wasn't feeling them. Um, and then these past couple of episodes, this episode with them all together, the last episode with all of them together, I'm a little whelmed. I'm a little, I'm feeling very, like, kind of, like, okay, this is a fun, this will be a fun cast to watch. This I, will be a very interesting cast to watch. I will say this, and I don't think I felt this way in, fuck all, maybe a decade. I don't remember ever thinking at any season before, but now that I'm reflecting back on it, it's been a long time since I would have been like, you know what? If this entire pod of all 14 queens went on a tour together, like if Peter and Murray was like, you get nothing but season 16 and nobody else, mm -hmm. I would pay to see this. Yeah. Because I want to see Amanda's glow up. Right. But I also want to see Safira, like, shatter glass. 
right with opera like and i want to see like q's amazing like artistry of like creativity Mm -hmm. and i want to see mirage's click clack and i want to see jane be boo boo to fool um like like i want to see like there's so much like variety in terms of like who they are and we've got and we've got pretty much everything from little girls to you know big broads and everything in between so yeah 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 it's cool makes sense all right you ready for (laughs) you ready for with the the swerves Mm -hmm. okay girl you go first Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so speaking of uh booba the foo um (sighs) what the fuck plain jane like i don't know where okay I'm going to put this, and I'm going to say this in the nicest way I know how. I don't know where all this came from. I don't know where all of this came from. You are a queen. You came out of the box being controversial. Out of the box. Mm -hmm. Your first line, entrance line, is, I am the authentic Russian queen from Boston, Massachusetts, which is a clear cut, like trying to get a cut in on Miss Katya. Like you are, you are, you are, you like so. That part mm-hmm. are the Russian whore from I forget whatever she actually right, right, said. Right, right. Whatever it was, it doesn't fucking matter. Um, you are confrontational for no reason because you are giving basic drag at best. At best, you are giving basic drag. Mm. And I am not a fan of it. Are you giving me cookies? <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> My husband got me cookies Aww. and made me cookies and got me me got got me. So here we go. There we go, y'all. Here you go. Oh, they're gonna disappear. Never mind. Anyway, they're blue velvet. That's so cute. Anyway, that being said, um, random aside, love my husband. Um, but uh, uh, <laughs> like Jim was saying, if you didn't hear, the 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 entendre was Jimbo wannabe, and I, you know what? I'm not even gonna oh. give her the pleasure of calling her that. Um, no, because Jimbo has talent. Oh! 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 Girl, I ha- I have <sighs> I I can understand if she's this plant like that makes the that is the only thing that makes sense to me right now mm. because she appears to be intentionally picking at girls. Now, someone I f- figured or I saw online on on the Twitters were saying things like, "Oh." Um, this is just, you know, the backstage kiki that we would all, the, all the queens would. No, no, I don't think that's what this is. I don't think that's what this is. I think this is, there's intent behind this. Right. There is definitely intent behind this. What that intent is, I don't know. But um, the fact that you won for Burger Finger. And a like Romanoff inspired Boston bean whore like drag thing with your titty out like it it yeah you you won so to compare episode one Sapphira Crystal does a does an operatic number then turns around and does a three four like piece reveal that wasn't the greatest reveal no it looked kind of awful but did all of these things and then turned out a fucking amazing lip sync with splits and jumps and titty twisting and all that shit to compare we get a quick reveal a pretty much a robe to a a Claire's outfit um, with 
you know, fake boobs are from, and then her her performance, her talent mm-hmm. is squirting mustard and ketchup on herself, on her big fake titties mm-hmm. under a hamburger. Just saying. And they both, these two queens won right. and now have immunity. <sighs> yeah. Okay. And, and <laughs> made an outfit out of a suit that was the average. Average-ish. Okay, okay, a little above average, but fine. Go, good for you, Plain Jane. You, you go, go right on ahead, out the door, take a right, <laughs> get into the car, and go to fuck home. <laughs> I'm not having it. I, I don't. I, I. There's something going on. I I don't like when you are intentionally dirty and down and cutthroat mm. and knocking other queens down. And you were like that from the beginning. Right. You you look you are acting very deceivy and decepti and being kind of a bitch with no cause other than I'm assuming the only reason I'm assuming is to give good television. Right. <laughs> what was that? Jim said, I hope they don't see the way I scored them. Oh, that. Right, right, right. Yeah. Anyway. Sorry for my rant, but I'm I'm not I'm I've not been a big fan of hers. That's okay. And I don't think I'm gonna be a I'm not gonna be a fan of hers and I'll be happy when she leaves. I really could give two shits. That, that right there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> woo. Mm-mm. Yeah. You feel better now? I feel good. Okay, I, 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 I'm allowed to. <laughs> it's fair. <laughs> Gary, Gary, what about you? <laughs> well, I have two. Um, the first one. Megami, Megami, Megami. Girl. Um, I, I don't know what to say. I have seen you before in other queens. Queens that are talented, but queens that are passionate that like have a very specific kind of like um, artistic outlook on things, but they are not often like revered, nor are they like applauded, um, and they don't win pageants or contests. Um, and to hear, was it plasma? Tsunami? Who's the who's the New York bitch that said that or was it Dawn? Megami is the Eeyore of New York drag. You're muted. <laughs> You're still muted. I think that was Dawn. <laughs> Cause I was like, wow. I was like, that's saying so much. Yes. And, and I feel conflicted because I think her heart is in the right place. Right. I think she honestly, genuinely cares and wants to use her, like, entertainment as a platform. Right. To get people to think, to engage, to change, to be better. And that's all fine and dandy, but I'm like, most people, when they go to a drag show, like, they don't come for that. They come to be entertained. 
So and, it, so it's it's a refinement of how to thread a needle mm-hmm. to do both. Right. Right. Like on the same line, Simone's um you know beautiful dress that she didn't turn around and had the bullet holes in with the with the crystal blue holes and stuff. Like that is mm-hmm. meant to like show a message that is thought provoking and and like a wow factor. You weren't expecting it. Right. Um I get from Megami that she is a intellectual queen. Right. She thinks a lot about things to the point sometimes where it becomes too literal. Mm. Um, and that is where I feel she's going to miss i'm sure in a new york like bar or whatever Mm -hmm. like her number holding the flag and holding up the signs and all that stuff probably would have like got some coin and applause and what have you on the grand stage of rupaul's drag race it felt very small and here's the oddity so i want to talk about that because there's because there's two different Megamis in episode two and episode three. So in episode two, she does that performance. When she started that performance, I was shocked that they cleared the rights to that song. Because most of the talent shows anymore are original things, not lip syncing to pre-existing track stuff because it poses apparently a problem and a cost. So that was the first thing that stood out to me as I was like, oh, we're doing this? But then, like, most everybody else commented on, we've got this easel with cards, and everyone keeps staring at the cards, because they're like, what do the cards do? Like, you you know, Manila, I think, already did the, like, upside-down painting thing, and, like, you know, so it's like, all right, what what are you going to do that's different, or whatever? And instead, it's protest. And a part of me is like, you didn't need an easel for that. You could have just had a table. Like, with the cards face down on it. So no one really knew or saw that there. So, yeah, there was just a lot of production, like, problematic things with the first one. Right. That being said, in the se- in the third episode, the second time we see her, props to your mama. She created a look. Like, she mm-hmm. did, like, a mermaid tail gown with, like, the whole Rosie the Riveter-esque theme so I hear you on the whole. She's very cerebral and she thinks too much because when you look at that, at the image of what she's putting out there, it's definitively got a whole thing to it. There's no like mishmatch, hodgepodge, what the fuck am I looking at? Like it was clearly well put together conceptually as far as like the theme, the concept. Right. Um, does it need refinement? Sure. Most of them do because they have like no time to make the Mm -hmm. outfit so so i'm just i'm just concerned because she's obviously a person who wears her heart on a sleeve um probably will be the emotional roller coaster queen of the season that will be up Mm -hmm. down and all around and all over the place um so i feel for her right my second swerve (laughs) plain jane's request so in the latest episode, she comes out in her skimpy little, like, reconstructed suit. Yeah, that shit. And she says she sees Carson put his glasses on to take a closer look. And she challenges to actually do that, to take a closer look, and you will find no flaws. Really, bitch? Because do you know what the camera caught when you walked away? The top of your pantyhose sticking out above the back belt and the fact that your skin tone obviously does not match. Like, Trixie Mattel probably went into, like, a full diabetic, like, (laughs) stroke seeing you and other queens several times walking the runway without any makeup on their hands or their arms or their legs, any of the exposed body parts. To actually mm-hmm. try to make a palette that matches. 
So mm-hmm. I have seen moles. I have seen skin tags. I have seen sun marks. And I'm like, you are no different, girl. And you are pasty white. So it shows up even more on your ass. So your whole, like, I guess I'm giving kind of, uh, I forget what the character's name is because I've not seen the movie, Showgirls. Oh, um, know me something. Yes, not know me. Know me, me Malone. Something. Yeah. Um, that was the that was the 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 vibe I was getting from this like kind of thing that she did when she walked out and walked back, and I was like, I'm not impressed. Not impressed. I think it's a swerve. It just. No, I'm not going to say anything else. I've already I've already bad mouthed my <laughs> Damon F today. That's okay. I might say something later. I anyway. know. I know. So there's that. So anyways, I did I did take up your request and I looked and I wasn't impressed and I thought it was problematic. So there we go. There's that. Moving on to nerve. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, David, what's your what who what, what are you giving nerve for? I've said it before. Okay. And I will say it every episode. Okay. Learn to sew. Oh learn to okay. sew. Learn to sew. Learn to sew. I cannot anymore. I cannot. I cannot like be like, okay, you you like no, you need to you know you are going on this show. You know that this is going to be a challenge. More than likely it's going nowadays, it's going to be an early challenge that you're going to have to make something. Right. You know this. Therefore, take some sewing lessons, get a sewing kit, get a sewing machine, find some patterns, do the things. I know it's a lot of work, but so is being on a television show. So maybe put some effort into it. I, I, maybe I, just a little bit. Here's, so here's the, here's the way I feel about this now. You don't okay. want to win. That part. You don't want to win. Right. You don't want to win $200,000 plus. Right. You don't want to win. Because if you wanted to win, you would have honed your craft, mm-hmm. got down all the rudimentary skills, mm-hmm. how to paint a mug, how to move your body, how to lip sync, how to be an artist, how to mm-hmm. sing, how mm-hmm. to be funny, yeah, how you to should... sew. Yes. You – this is season fucking 16. You should know better. Right. Hone some skills. Take some classes. Do – some work put some work into this if you're gonna be on this show you're gonna you know all that is coming right you need it you're gonna need a character for snatch game or two or three you're gonna need something for that so you you might as well start working on something on that now right. you're gonna probably do an improv challenge learn some fucking improv you're going to do an acting challenge go to some acting classes you're going to build outfits You are going to be required to build outfits. Right. I think it's just one of those things now where I'm like, I don't know why you're on the show. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know why you applied to be on the show and agreed to come on the show. Right. If you don't seriously want to win. Right. And that's where my biggest like issue is, is that, it's not that it's not going to happen. And there are very few Ben de la Crims who, like, some girls who have just, like, miraculously built something without having that ability, at least when they started. Mm-hmm. Um, there are very few queens out there that have the ability to create something from, like, the rudimentary skills of gluing hot gluing shit together. Right. Don't get me wrong. I will give Maya her props a little bit, mostly because while it was kind of um, forever 21 is, I think the, the, the phrase they use, the judges use, it was a put together outfit that was cohesive like everything kind of worked together, like the all the different like um, plaids kind of, it was colorful. It was something that worked in a sense. Was it perfect? No, but it kind of worked, meaning kind of. 
I, I don't want to don't don't get it twisted. Like it wasn't like super fucking amazing, but it was. If you don't know how to sew, she at least put something together that kind of worked. I think she picked things that went together, and I think somebody else helped her sew. I mean, that could probably be it too. We don't know. That's and the reality in my head. Because mm-hmm. it was wearable, and it didn't look like it was hot glued to me. So I'm like, somebody helped you put that together. Someone helped somewhere down the right. line. And, and that's, that's where tr- and that's where I am, like, so disappointed and mm-hmm. also bothered. Mm-hmm. I will own this, that Maya Iman page was not in the bottom two. So when Geneva Carr is in the bottom two, I was like, say what? I was like, oh, oh, is that what we're doing? Yeah. And I feel this was this was production's heavy hand. Oh, y'all mm-hmm. wanted a twist, eh? Right. So, girl, I, 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 I hear you and I see you. When Geneva Carr was pissed and she was like, excuse me? <laughs> I'm in the bottom two? And, and that's where I got her, like, they showed it in Untucked. Like her clearly, like in her feelings, like and I, I felt it because I agree. I don't think Geneva should have been in the bottom. I think the only reason she was in the bottom was because she was in, she was in the top last week. Right. So we have to have that like fall from grace moment. But that's, um, but that's also where I'm like, you know what? In my opinion, uh, Maya should have been in the bottom too, with, um. Hershey. Hershey, thank you. She has three names. I couldn't remember the first one. Um, and I think Maya should have gone home and Hershey should have stayed. Mm. You're not impressing me, girl. Actually, I'm waiting for this. Now that I think about it, I want Morphine and I want Maya to go head to head. I want to see the mm-hmm. two Miami bitches go to head to head and see who the hell leaves. And then the next week, the other one can go. Anyways. Um, Sorry, I'm just saying it. I'm I'm over. I'm already over. And it's episode three. You say shade, I say fact. That's how I feel. <laughs> so we continue. Uh, we can. So for my nerve, um, I put down Q versus Nymphia Wind. Hmm. They are definitively right now the two front runners as look queens. Mm-hmm. Uh, Q, however, is only going to get so far unless unless she's playing a game of some kind, which she could be. That she's not good at body movement and dancing when in fact she's actually okay she's just not being good at it right now so she has an arc over the course of the season is a possibility i will grant her that because she she can craft the fuck out of things and make Mm -hmm. some really good looking stuff but based on on the what is it the first week's lip sync um yes it was mm-hmm. like, oh, girl, you're in trouble. Like when we get when we get to a choreo challenge, mm-hmm. you're gonna struggle, bus. But maybe she won't. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where things go. Um, and that's sort of where I wonder. Sometimes, given what I've seen of Q, I wonder if she needs direction. So a choreography, mm-hmm. like she can pick up choreography. It's not that she can't move well just maybe she needs the right guidance to tell her how to move if that makes sense true like she, on her own no right but she might also be the one the type of queen that like needs to rehearse 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 and like mm-hmm. stay up until three or four in the morning in her hotel room going over it and over it and over it and mm-hmm. over it and over it to like get it down because right. like you said she's instructed she's told how to do it like and then she just like needs to make it rote pattern mm-hmm. and get it out there yeah. Um, I don't know. So there but uh yeah, Nymphia don't sleep on this bitch. Like No. She she is so far, I think she's better than Q. 
I think she is like giving masterclass on how to be the one. Mm-hmm. Like not bothered how to yeah. be catty, how mm-hmm. to be spicy, how mm-hmm. to have fun, how to like be a, a shit stir a little bit and like just do all the things. Be goofy, be wild, be creative, be talented. Um, all that being said, I'm going to say this now because everyone has been losing their shit about Nymphia's runway. Mm-hmm. I was impressed in episode three, the first one out the gate, Little Boy Blue. I was like, oh, 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 we we brought that. Okay, Queen, I see you. Um, I thought her second one was less exciting. As the, the wedding. judges said, yeah, as the judges said, I wouldn't have gotten that this was Angelina Jolie. Fair. Um, it's a nice touch. It I has think meaning. Yeah, I think that was sort of the the kind of juxtaposition. I think she was she went about it the wrong way, and it did not. I will own it did not fit as well, um, particularly in like the the um, middle area. It felt very big on her on the sides. Um, yeah, but um, I understood the perspective. I wonder if this was. Did she mean for this to be this outfit? Mm. Or was it just a choice that she decided to make? Right. Because she wanted to bring the outfit, which is fair. Which, yeah, I mean, that's fair. And then we get to the third outfit. Mm-hmm. I will own, I will admit, this hit me like when Shea Coulee did her like creation outfit and turned the corner in mm-hmm. her construction drag. Like, right. it hit me the same way. She turned the corner, and I was like, the fuck? I was like, oh, oh, oh! This is what we're bringing to the runway. That being said, I have seen so many clips, so many, like, postings, so many gifts already. People saying, if this queen wins, this will be part of the package that gets played over and over and over again as to, like, one of her best moments. Blah, blah, blah. Other queens are, like, talking, you know, people are, are critiquing and saying, this is the highlight of, like, any created outfit on the runway right. in all the seasons. Right. That being said, I pose this challenge, and I would like your honest answer on this, Damon. Mm-hmm. What pieces of her outfit did she make? Hmm. Did she make the skirt? Did she I... make the top, the blouse? Did she Mm. make the hat? Or did she bring prepared pieces, put them together, and incorporated all the ties? That's a very interesting question, Mr. Gary. I don't Um, necessarily expect you to have an answer. I'm posing um, it on purpose to make people think because does she deserve the flowers? Absolutely. Absolutely. That said, is she one of the smartest fucking contestants ever to know how to meet what the challenge is and not get wrapped up in the whole, like, it needs to be 100% made from? And I'm only saying that because I don't know where the material in the skirt came from. And I don't know where the material in the top, the blouse, came from. So the blouse was probably, it looks like an oversized men's shirt. Notice I said looks like. Right. Because men's shirts don't blouse the way that blouse did. So um, I don't, that's where I'm getting, maybe that's where that comes from. I will need to look at the episode again Mm -hmm. because I don't think they did a normally they will do a larger like overview of the stuff that they're going to make, you know, the materials that they're going to use things from like and I don't recall that being in this episode. Mm -hmm. I recall a very quick shot and then them running for it all. 
Um, so I would need to look, cause I remember and um, Plain Jane in her cuntiness um, mentioned that there were also some stretch fabrics available. So I, Correct. there's a part of me that wonders if there were boxes, pallets, whatever of, of, of fabrics like nearby as well that kind of were you could grab from because i'd agree i don't know where that brown pleather came from and given that this was father quote unquote um you know pieces like materials Mm -hmm. I, i don't know a men's outfit piece of thing that that could have come from you know like where would you find right brown pleather so i'm actually looking at a picture online right now on a social media site of her actual like posting of her image like you know how the queens get home and they like you know re Mm -hmm, wear mm -hmm. the outfit or whatever and it's at a shop of some kind or whatever but um it is a cut off men's yellow dress shirt and it does look oversized for her frame yes she is small right because she's because she's she's tiny so that's why it had this very like triangular trapezoidal kind of effect to it because whatever she did she made the shoulders all the way out to the edge Mm -hmm, and it's mm -hmm. not her shoulders no so it it made the silhouette thing um yeah yeah. The the fabric that the skirt is made out of, I don't know what this is. It looks like vinyl tablecloth. It does not look like men's clothing. Yeah. Something. I don't know. So that being said, um, I just posed the question because I was curious about how much of this was actually made. I mean, obviously the boots were not. Um, yeah. And that's fine. So I just bring it up because I think the use of the um wire work to make mm-hmm. the ties the do what she did is what wowed everybody right and a part of me is like well if i take all the ties away what do i have left yeah i've got a beautiful skirt and a jacket and a hat and a part of me kind of wonders like how much of this was i mean could she have made all of it sure but i'm also kind of curious cuz it seems strategically intelligent to piece things together mm-hmm, mm-hmm. where i think a it, lot of queens like they they try to make an entire thing mm-hmm. a la um megami's rosie the river kind of inspired outfit dress correct. correct yeah i can see that i'm i do think it was amazing i did really love it and I'm, i think it's actually is that what I made my, um, yeah, it was going to be my snaps. I'm going to remove it for now just because we're already talking about it because I had to. Okay. Um, but, uh, uh, I, I love the dress. I love the outfit. I love what was made. I think it was very, you know, creative and concept and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I do no, she did a bit of trickery because she told Rue, I'm going to take the ties apart and make like an out, like a something out of it, which wasn't what she did at all. Well, she may I mean, have done to something be fair, with the ties. Who, who was it? Was it, um, was it Hershey? No, somebody, somebody did the socks. Mm hmm. Like they, it was were gonna do, like they were going to do a pleated skirt and then quickly realized that was not the thing to do. That was um, Hershey. Right. And I'm like, I wonder if she had se- if she was seriously going to do that or if she changed her mind. Like if she already knew this wasn't the direction to go once she put it together. Like because it's only it's only like this big. It's not very much. You mean her, like you mean the Hershey and the skirt? Right. Yeah. Right, right. Like like the little yeah. panel piece. And so I was like, huh. Interesting. So a part of me was like, did you get that far and then looked at it, you know, kind of held it up and was like, your girl isn't going to work and no. just stopped, but used it mm-hmm. for camera because yeah, she had to show something. 
Well, and with with Nymphia, it was she just was covered with all the ties. Like she had them draped around her and was holding them when she came up to Rue to have the conversation. Right. And that's what she told Rue. Right. So, again, was that a a tactic? Was that Mm -hmm. a play to like, I'm going to do this because Rue says that's going to take a lot of time, girl. Um, And she kind of goes, I think I can do it kind of thing. Because she already yeah. had a full concept ready, and she knew what she needed to do. And to be fair, if you look closely at what she put together, I'll give I'll grant her that it's a men's te- a men's button down shirt, and all she did was cut the bottom of it off and give it a hem. So that doesn't take that much if you know how to sew. Yeah, you just have to measure it correctly, cut it accurately, like a straight line. Then, yeah, <laughs> and know? then put it through a sewing machine with the like you know hems right. in. And yeah. then, you it know, will. the skirt is probably the bigger thing, which I'm is, I guess, the part I'm kind of going, skirt's great. Did you make the skirt? If so, well, what did it come from, I guess? And I'm not trying to take I, away your thunder. I'm just no, no, no. saying. Yeah, I get what you mean. She's a strategic bitch. Got to watch out for that one. Yep. Like, Agreed. That's, why, that's where I think she's like, you know, cream of the crop in this particular season. All right. So anyways, that was a positive swerve for those that weren't understanding. <laughs> <laughs> about Q versus Nymphia. Like I like I really think like they are like the ones to watch. Um in their, especially for their creativity. Yeah. So with that said, you want to move on to the next? Sure. All right. All right, so let's get to snaps and eye rolls. These are uh, the highs and the lows of the episodes. Um, what we think are truly the hits and misses uh, for us as they came across. So uh, I'm going to give it to you, Damon, on the first one for snaps. Sorry. You know, normally you don't fast, eat. Girl. Normally you okay. don't eat while we're recording. I'm just going to say. I don't normally. They're really good cookies. I will, I will, I will say that much. I They're really good cookies. I understand when your husband puts something in your face for you to put in your mouth, you do it. But you know, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Astor, they interfere with your podcast and go a little bit. Anyway, that being said, um, I wrote plasma energy, and I'm giving snaps to, I think one of the, um. Um, best comment- commentators on the season so far. Um, I've been mm-hmm. loving Plasma's um, just choices and what she's saying. I'm loving her energy. Um, she's giving, obviously, very Broadway, very New York, very, you know... Um, I will admit her talent show was a little... Um, um, I had the word and I just lost it. No, not Plasma's. Anyway... It was a lot. Uh, it was too much. It was too much. It yeah. was a lot. Yeah. It was it was a lot. Um, I think again, I agree with Michelle in that if she had chosen one or two things, maybe done the little burlesque with the singing, I would have been fine with it. Adding the um, um, imitations was a bit much, and they, to be blunt, they're pretty basic Im- imitations that I think just about everybody knows how to do in New York. But um, Well, I felt like, why are you showing us your, your potential snatch game so early? Right. There was a lot going on right now. So that being said, um, I've been enjoying her like reactions and speaking on things. And also, she is not afraid to say some shit, mm-hmm. which is why I've been liking her um, in particular. She was reminding me a lot of Dawn. I'm getting a lot of that, like, similar to Dawn. There's a lot of, like, especially in the um, confessional moments, there's some there's some, there's some mm. definite shade cattiness going on, which I'm kind of a big fan of. Um, and, yeah, I, I just, I, I'm really liking her overall energy. Um, she's a... Um, She's a high, I think she's going to be a high place for me, depending on what we get in, in the challenges. 
I right. I think she'll be top half. Mm-hmm. Um, I also appreciated that she came for Jane. So when yep. untucked, if y'all didn't see, girl, girl, <laughs> you've got to watch untucked because that's when it got super spicy and plain Jane came for Amanda, and mm-hmm. everybody was like, "Duh, fuck!" Like, mm-hmm. what is going on? And I love how Plasma, like, set her and was like, well, before you come for her, you should fix that bracelet that's stuck on your arm hair. And, like, and the queens were like, <laughs> and, uh, oop. like, like, it was so good. Give it. And I love Give how it. Jade was like, who said that? And Plasma was like, I did. <laughs> like she, she just... what, and that's that's the other thing I'm loving. She is she don't give a she she's not one of these girls. Maybe a little bit, but she's not going to be one of these girls that's going to fully, 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 fully edit herself. But yeah. she was like, "Who said that?" She was like, "I did." Like, what are you going to do? Like, I've already said it. It's already out there. Like, you heard me. So well, and I think the reason why Plasma felt so emboldened because she's like, because it's a fact. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have arm hair. Your bracelet is stuck on it. You should probably fix it. Before you start coming for someone else on the uh, in the, in the cast, mm-hmm. and I was like, mm. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> "Give me that, mm-hmm. love that, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah." Gary, what about you? Um, well, you could, I mean, well, yeah. it's it's kind of on the same. I'm giving snaps for opinions abound. Mm-hmm. There aren't many queens in this group that aren't like willing to say something, right? That is really interesting to me that we've got this mix. And even though we've got some that are kind of wallflowerish, um, mm-hmm. who probably shouldn't be around very long, um, the vast majority of them, 10 out of 14, 11 out of 14, maybe 12 out of 14, like open their mouths and actually say things. Yeah. And about each other mm-hmm. and what's going on. And I'm like, like, like and and this was so stupido. This whole thing, teaching n- Nymphia like bad Spanish Spanglish like shit to say in the workroom. <laughs> I was like, the reason why this is in the show is because they did it. Like, because it was right. so stupid, but it was mm-hmm. it was funny. Yeah. Like it in and the thing is, I was like. You know, and then there was this whole like kind of back and forth in front of the mirror while they're putting their faces on. And I was mm-hmm. like, I was like watching who's saying what and like kind of the exchange. And I was like, they they aren't having a problem talking, most of them. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah. yeah, I uh I think the opinions abound, and I'm okay with this because I don't think many people except for one are out of pocket like in their comments and their statements and their things mm-hmm. because most of the time it is catty like it's it and this is the debate that I think people are not understanding necessarily that plain Jane isn't portraying when people talk about like how queens behave with other queens and how they like get catty and they get cunty mm-hmm. and they say things and like they're you know they're throwing shade and yeah like like it's all it's kind of like verbal hazing but it's yeah. lighthearted. it isn't meant to be mean and i think plain jane based on the confessional quickly figured out that her choice of words were not the best and I'm like, okay, I will grant you that in the heat of the moment, when you started getting called out and there was some pushback, you just weren't picking it up. Like, you weren't getting it when several mm-hmm. of the other queens are all like, what are you doing? What is happening right. here? Like, mm-hmm. why, are, why are you doing this? And right. so in confessional, she says that she realizes that there should probably was another way to have that conversation. And we're all like, yes, we know. We watched. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. we are all well aware. So, Oh, we know. <laughs> so I feel like most of the queens are all very much of that. And, that. and this, unfortunately, plays into the whole conspiracy theory that she's a plant and that she's not mm. really a veteran queen because she would know and understand 
how to say things at a certain point in a certain place in a certain time um and and you know and like and how to portray that in an earnest way if you are truly trying to give feedback to somebody but instead like it's like you're serving you know a platter of razor blades it's like no mm-hmm. honey, like that's not how that's not 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 oh. not that it not that it so anyways um so she's 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 to me the exception to the rest of them as far as opinions abound right. and that i think they like they are you know uh, understandably they have egos mm-hmm. as they probably should because to be an entertainer is to put yourself out there and to believe in yourself so that just kind of comes with the territory um, right. So yeah. That being said, uh, eye rolls. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I put down the Amanda hate. Okay. And this relates to the un- most recent untucked. It relates to like a couple of things that are happening. Um, I'm giving this eye rolls because I'm I'm already tired of it. Mm. Because. Seeing episode three, I already saw a bit of growth. Not a lot, don't get me wrong. Not right, a lot of growth, right, but right. I saw the bit of growth between Amanda's first episode and this one. Right. Um, she's working on makeup. She's doing what she can. She looked a lot better this episode, um, this past episode, than her first one. Mm-hmm. I just, I will admit that. Um, and I wasn't, I did not hate her outfit choices for the mother of all balls. I actually kind of, I, if I'm looking at my thing correctly, let me go back to that page. I kind of marked her pretty good on a couple of them. Cause I kind of liked it. It wasn't mm-hmm. like, Oh my God, like so fucking amazing. But it was, I, I don't normally write a girl's name down unless I actually liked it. Mm-hmm. And she got r- written down for all three. I love the weird cat thing. I don't know why, but it just kind of worked. I don't. I think it was kind of cute and funny. Was, don't ask me why. She's got a thing for cats. Nobody knows yeah. what, what's going on there. Um, and I think she did a decent job making the outfit that she had on. Um, I feel that she's a queen that's going to need some work, and she's working on it. Right. Like, it's not different. So... When and why um, Plane came, you know, for her in Untucked, specifically in Untucked, with no reason. I loved her clapbacks. I loved her. For, I loved what she said. I felt like she ha- handled that very fucking well. Mm-hmm. Very well. Because the thing that she got that I think most of us were feeling is like, why are you coming for me? We have not, we have not done, we have not had any interaction, at least as far as we know. Like right. what we saw on the show, there was no real interaction between the two. Yes, there were confessional moments, but there was no real like major interactions between the two. Right. And for her to for plain Jane to come for Amanda in these moments, it felt like it was coming out of left field. Um, maybe there had been a comment in confessionals, but I don't know if we ever, she ever said it to her face mm-hmm. or said it in the, the, the workroom or whatever. So for her to have her, have her, have plain Jane come for her in this moment for no reason whatsoever. All. And then not only that, but to come for her and be like, kind of, basically saying I need I need you to give me a reason to like you that's kind of what it felt like when she said it and I was just like why what the what what is going on here where 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 the fuck is this coming from right, right. what the fuck is going on here why are you saying this why would you say this like period right when there's no reason for it right and you know she was Amanda was a bit of a I, no, not a bit. Amanda was a mess in the 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 first episode. Just, just yeah. I agree. If you watch, I ended up watching because it got suggested to me. 
she has a YouTube channel she just started. And she do- redoes her makeup from that, like, infamous the purple, purple thing. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And she's there with Dawn, which is interesting. Rumor has it she's Amanda is dating Dawn's friend. Mm. And, the, and her and Dawn have become very close. Um, but what's interesting is in her YouTube video, her tutorial, um, she tries to recreate what it's like to have put that together and why it was so bad. And it must be the NDA because she bleeps out every single time she says how many minutes they had to put the look together. Mm. Which I found very interesting. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. Because well, I kind of to... started getting the impression that it was like 20 minutes or 30 minutes like mm-hmm. to put your face on and blah, blah, blah. She also does talk about how like her skills have improved and what type of makeup she was using in that very specific episode. Right. And how the makeup was part of the problem to begin with. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyways, I just say so, that right. to be like, I think she's learned a lot and I think she has gotten better. Mm-hmm. And therefore, I think she's rolling with it really well. Yeah. I don't. Do I think Amanda's going to win this drag race? No, I don't think that right, at all. Right. right. Um, but I do think we need to cut her a little bit of slack, especially when it looks like she's improving and the improvement that I saw from a lit- like literally two episodes. That's, that says something to me. Now, again, is she getting help? Maybe she is. Is she, Maybe some girl, some of the girls are being like, girl, you need to do this or that or whatever because they, you know, they were a little harsh on her. Mm-hmm. In in it, the first episode, maybe rightfully so, maybe a little, but um, her she's improved, right? And you can tell that she's improved, right? And that's sort of where I'm enjoying seeing that, and I don't think she deserves all the negativity, especially in the show that she has got. She got that's fair. That's so fair. that's where my eye rolls are. Gary. Well, I kind of touched Ooh. on it earlier. <laughs> oh, right. That's right. Guest star relevancy. I'm going to get on the Willem train. Guest star should have relevancy to drag queens. Charlize Theron could be arguably not relevant to drag queens, but her talking to the queens, mm-hmm. both in the workroom and in Untucked, was incredibly productive. Right. Like, it was uplifting. It was very like supportive. It was understanding what it is to put on an a presentation, like and because of that, like I felt she she was relevant. Second episode not relevant, in my opinion. Right. I don't know why she was there. Third episode, Isaac Mizrahi. How much more fucking relevant can you get? It's a it's a ball challenge. It's a fashion mm-hmm. challenge. It's mm-hmm. a presentation. It's a creation challenge. That faggot deserves to be uh, up there on the panel. <laughs> but he does. He does. He has every right to be there. He should be there every goddamn season as far as I'm concerned. Probably more than Carson. So I feel like, you know, I don't know what's going on with the flip flop. So, I, I, all right, we're three episodes in. We're going to have, what, 12, 14, 16, 27 episodes? I don't know. Like, I feel like every other episode is going to be a good, good, relevant guest judge, and then not. And then good, and then not. So, just be ready. Well, um, who's next? Looking at the, um, if they put the guest judges in order on the Wikipedia page, the, the wikipedia.org page, mm-hmm. um, it says after Isaac Mizrahi, it has Sarah Michelle Geller, Buffy. And okay. if I'm remembering the, ch- I'm trying to remember the challenge. Come on, come down. Is it down, acting? Down. That's what I'm. Tra- it's the it's the improv the 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 um comedy show one. The R- oh R- right, because it's, it's live. yeah, it's like SNL. Yeah, RDR live or RPDR live. Okay. That I seems mean, a little strange to me because I, you would like, I would want someone like Amy Poehler or Tina Fey, someone from like you know the from the that SNL actual that, that concept, yeah. yeah, 
that would make sense. Even Will Sasso. Yeah. Um, yes, I totally <laughs> said his name because I've had a thing for him. Um, <laughs> I have to I own it. Like, I like because I'm pretty like, sure everybody I was, was like, like, "Who?" Um, <laughs> I was like, "Where, where, where are you going, Gary?" <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe Nick Offerman. Like, I'm not, I'm not yeah. trying to shoot down Sarah Michelle Gellar, but I'm like, eh, okay. It, I get what you mean, but I get what you mean. Like. Like I it, agree so, in a sense. So I'm just like I I and maybe Becky G's an anomaly and the rest of the guest, you know, judges will will make far more sense. We'll mm-hmm. see. But that's... I'm looking through things and I feel <laughs> like sorry, I'm looking at it and there are a couple of things and it's gonna be like I need to know more about the challenge. Who the challenges right. that are coming. Um Yeah. I'm gonna definitely need to know. Because there are, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There are 15 names here. We've already gotten three. That's fair. So, interesting. So, with that being said, uh, that's pretty much it for this episode for us. Mm. Um, there are plenty of ways to get in contact with us. You can go to our blog, CubsOutLoud.com. You can shoot us an email, CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. You can also leave us a voicemail. Tell us your thoughts. Do you think we're too spicy? We're being too aggressive? Not aggressive enough? Um, maybe you're a plain Jane fanatic, Stan, and you want to tell us off. You can call us, 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. Convince us. We'll be happy to play your your uh, voicemail on the show. If you would like Good to luck. find us... <laughs> You can pretty much find us anywhere online as comes out loud uh, on the social media sites. Um, if you want to join our chat, you can go to tinyurl.com backslash telegram dash C-O-L-D-R, um, where it's just a group of us that have been, you know, watching episodes and seasons for a very long time. They kind of chit chat about that as they go by. Um, if you want to know when we're going to be doing our live shows um, for the regular series, you can go to tinyurl.com backslash calendar uh, dash C-O-L. And if you want to support us, there's several ways to do that. And the first of all is, you know what you can do? <laughs> you can get yourself some merch. You can go to Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud, and you can see all sorts of things on there from the regular series plus Cubs Out Loud Drag Race. And David and I today are twinsies. We're both wearing our uh, consent is my foreplay drag pride themed shirt. Um, so for those that don't know, uh, drag pride has particular colors it also has a crown so we worked that together into a new t-shirt theme that we've had for a little bit so there's that there's also the anything that has the cubs out loud drag race logo on it as well or, um, damon has the uh, lovely coffee cup that can be two-toned so there's that but there's lots of different things you can get on there um, from us here at Cubs Out Loud. You can also uh, go to patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud and for a dollar or more a month, you can support us by being a patron over there and you get early access to the podcasts, which include uh, the what we call the pre and post show, the bookends, so you get longer uh, editions of these particular things, both video and audio. And also, if you would just like to give us a tip, Maybe you like uh, what Damon's wearing today. Maybe you like the things that I have to say and you want to play favorites. That's fine. We're okay with that. Give us some coin. Go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Drop us a, a tip one time. We greatly appreciate it. Keeps the lights on, as we say. And in terms of the podcast, you can pretty much find Cubs Out Loud Drag Race anywhere that you can listen to a podcast um, online. You just do for Cubs Out Loud Drag Race. It's a separate uh, audio feed. And, of course, it's embedded as a playlist on our YouTube channel if you want to watch us on there to see the things that we are uh, doing and discussing. Damon, where would they find you online? You are muted. Down here. There it is. It's down there. I <laughs> muted myself because, anyway. Um... If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at theatercub79, that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9 on most beer related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umber on Twitter. That Twitter is definitely not safe for work. The safe for work Twitter is D-M-A-Gamer79. Um, you can also find me on uh, TikTok as D-M-A-Gamer79, which is a bit more safe for work. Um, and I am not safe for work again on um 
Blue Sky as um, Pup Umbra, Pup Umbra Seven Nine. <clears throat> I always forget that one because it's is the same different. as your others. Pup Underscore Umbra. No, it is not because I don't think you could do un- uh, you couldn't do underscores in oh. um, Blue Sky. So it's okay. it Pup Umbra Seven Nine. Gotcha. That's why it feels different. Anyway. Sure. Gary, if you want to find me online, you can pretty much find me anywhere as Gabriel73. I do have a Twitter account um, that I just updated actually today. That's Gabriel73, D R A G, Gabriel73 Drag, because I, that's where I follow everything that's drag entertainment. And so um, I was seeing some things that were coming across my not safe for work Twitter account. So I was blocking the queens and then promptly switching profiles and then following them over there. So everything kind of keeps contained in a bubble. Um, then I was following some of the queens from season 16 and, and uh, as they've been posting some stuff. So that's great. So with that said, uh, this is it for this particular episode. We'll be back in two weeks where we discuss episodes uh, four and five. And mm. we'll see how that uh, plays out for all these girls. And yeah. who's next to go home? Oh, speaking of uh, such things, you know, I have to say, when queens leave, they don't get a whole lot of like you know, time to prepare, but, um, this isn't the exact clip, but shout out to, um, Hershey Liqueur Jeté for this, this quip as she was leaving. It's chocolate. Baby. Well done. Well done. I laughed. Mm-hmm. And I heard, I heard, I heard like the cast and production, like kind of laughing too. They yes. got a kick out of that. It was very well done. So with that, we will see you soon, kittens. Ah.